In this video, I'm reacting to a data platform for personalized customer support, something that is very important because we all know it, service hotlines often are very annoying to work with because you call and you always have to start from the beginning. This is my account ID. This is my address, so stuff like that. Here's a clever example for personalized customer support that actually knows about you and your purchase history. What is the most annoying thing for you when you call a service hotline? Comment below. Let's find out if we could solve this with this platform or solve this generally with data. So let's get into it. This is a video from AWS My Architecture. I'm going to link the video below so you can look at the original one. Lizzie, welcome to the show. Thanks, Hardy. Lizzie, tell us what Traeger does. Traeger sells uh, wood pellet grills, and our mission is to bring people together to make the world a more flavorful place. And one exciting new way we're doing this is with the launch of a meal, a Traeger branded meal kit uh, called Traeger Provisions. So is that what we are going to dive into the architecture today? Yes, exactly. We're going to talk about how we uh, personalize our customer support experience for our Traeger Provisions customers. Okay, so it's not selling grills and and all of this. It's they are they have provisions. They are have most likely they are having packages of meat or whatever, and you can order this. This will come to your house, and you can grill it on your new uh, Traeger grill. Makes sense. It's cool. So let's look at how they are matching this information and matching the customer support. Traeger uh, Provisions customer will go onto the Traeger Provisions website, place an order, and uh, that order data will come from Shopify straight into EventBridge. So it's coming from Shopify into EventBridge and then from EventBridge through to Kinesis Data Firehose. Uh, from Kinesis Data Firehose, we uh, send all of that order data right into S3. So you're sending this real-time data. So this, what this means here is, here's Shopify, right? So the actual purchase and everything is not what this system cares about. This is, this is not about the transaction of the actual purchase. This is more locking this information and having this in your data lake so you can work with it later and do cool stuff with it. They're using using Shopify as the as the platform for selling this. Also very interesting. So Shopify event bridge, this flows into Kinesis Firehose and Firehose automatically then drops the files into S3. Uh, what happens? What do you do with that data that's on S3? So we have uh, an event trigger set up in S3. It'll trigger a Lambda and then uh, that Lambda, what it does is stores uh, some specific order metadata in a DynamoDB table. So we have some specifics about the customer, their phone number, um, and the order they placed handy in DynamoDB. This is something that I don't understand. Why are they doing it this way? This, this makes no sense to me. Why are you moving here into files? All right, so you have, you have here files and then setting a trigger again and processing the files with the Lambda function. Because Firehost, you can access like a message queue, so you could directly go this way. Right? And these have these files just as a, as a data lake. It, it seems like a overcomplication of this. And then you process it with Lambda, put it into DynamoDB, yeah. So I would not build it this way. It would be interesting why they did it this way, because personally, I hate working with files. So files is whenever I can not work with files, I'm going to not work with files and automate everything. Yeah, I, I don't understand why they did it like this. Could this be something with pricing and making it easier? Very often you have to do this because the messages are very big. So you would drop them first into S3, but the messages are already coming here through Data Firehose, most likely as a JSON here. So why would you drop this message in here and then have Kinesis write it 
to S3. I think you can define a buffer here. So this will buffer JSONs together and then drop them into files. It would make a lot more sense to go the, the, the straight route. Have the JSON information of this one purchase because it, it's literally, this is this is on a purchase by purchase basis. So go just, just go straight through it here and then drop it into DynamoDB. And this keep this just as a as a data lake to do further analytics on. This is setting up the stage for when a customer calls in. Uh, the call comes in to connect, and uh, we want to first uh, check where that call is coming from. So that's what we use Pinpoint for. So the call comes in, um, and we uh, check with Pinpoint: is it a U.S. call or is it coming from another country? We can personalize the language options from there. But then uh, the next thing we do is connect is going to trigger a Lambda. And that Lambda is then going to uh, query DynamoDB, the same table that we have with all of the provisions metadata. And it's going to check, is that phone number, um, does that ex customer exist here in our DynamoDB table? And if so, then uh, we send this back up through Lambda and to connect. And we say, hey, this is a provisions customer. With the phone number, you already know the metadata of the customer. The call comes in, you could pinpoint here the uh, the actual country. I don't know if with pinpoint, you could also pinpoint like cities. Here in Germany, cities have codes. I don't know how it's in the US. I'm guessing you have a you have an area code or something, right? Then you have the information, you look into DynamoDB that you previously filled and you have metadata of this customer, which is, that's really cool. You're able to match this metadata based on the phone number, you're able to match it back to the customer that you order information that you already have on there. So once it lands on Connect here, what happens after that? So the last thing is we want to check uh, what the reason for their contact was. So we invoke a Lexbot that just asks them uh, that simple question, what the reason for their contact was. And then uh, with that in hand, it goes back to connect. And then we route it to a specialized queue for agents that are trained in handling these provisions contacts. Right now, it's very rudimentary as I understand this. This is not, this bot isn't really, well, this this bot you could feed with all the metadata from your, from your DynamoDB, right? that's coming through Lambda and Connect and so on. This is your bot here. You have your bot, you have your, Dynamo, you have your DynamoDB information that goes here into the bot. And you could build this bot based on the metadata of your, your customer. Like you could ask the, the customer, ah, is this about your last purchase? And then this would go into back into Connect and then they, they actually have the person here, right? Who is who is on the phone. And this person would then already know a bit of information from, from this because the bot is sending data back to that person. This is what I like because this is a nice use case of making this dynamic, making this customer centric and personalized. You have the metadata because this it goes through your pipeline through when it, something is purchased, gets put into DynamoDB, and then you have that bot that is personalized based on the DynamoDB data, and then the information goes back to the actual person who is getting the call and is talking to the to the client. This architecture is currently in the US, but I can already see uh, using the services, the high le higher level services that you're using in Connect, that this can scale well as you expand into other regions. Thank you for sharing this architecture with us, both on the order processing side and the personalization side. As, as you said, from a scaling point, this is very easy to scale because this it's it's serverless. The data is coming in from Shopify. Pinpoint will tell you is do you do you need to configure your uh, your Lexbot so it has a different language and asks different questions in different languages. Uh, it's 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 cool. It's a really nice way of of doing this, and you can see how easy it is. The only thing that is still in my mind is why are they doing this detour here? I, th this makes no sense. I would, I would again. I would go this way here, lambda kinesis lambda, and this I would, I would delete here, and then have some kind of, um, like I showed in the, in the Riot Games League of Legends video, so I have something here like Athena, 
Athena and uh, a database. And then connect here through and have some run some kind of uh, analytics queries on top of the data in S3. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something here. I find this a very interesting use case. If you want to see more of these videos, there's also a link in the description of this video to the playlist for these architecture review videos. And if you want to learn data engineering, check out my academy, learndataengineering.com. See you next time.